welcome students in the organic chemistry lecture series uh, in this video we are going to study about the factors influencing the e1 and e2 mechanism in previous videos we have seen about the e1 and e2 elimination reaction and their mechanism okay now in this video we are going to study about what are the factors which influence the e1 or e2 mechanism or what are the factors which decides whether the elimination takes place via E1 mechanism or E2 mechanism. The most important factor uh, is the uh, nature of substrate. Nature of substrate. Substrate means starting material, reactant. Okay. Nature of substrate. So while studying the E1 and E2 mechanism, uh, we know that in E2 mechanism, the CH bond and cx bond breaks simultaneously okay and in e1 mechanism first of all cx bond breaks and then ch bond breaks we know this so nature of substrate how the nature of substrate influence the e1 and e2 mechanism that we have to see we know that if we consider the e2 uh, reaction then we know that primary alkyl halides primary alkyl halides favors the e2 elimination while tertiary alkyl halide alkyl halides favors the e1 elimination mechanism okay so if we take ch3 ch2 br and if we do the dehydrohalogenation of this ch3 ch2 br in presence of base then we know there is a formation of ch2 double bond ch2 alkene okay but this reaction will follow the e2 mechanism this will follow the e2 mechanism because this is primary alkyl halide and we know that in primary alkyl halide the ch and ch bond breaks simultaneously but if we take tertiary alkyl halide say tertiary butyl bromide tertiary butyl bromide uh, in presence of base then there is a formation of ch2 double bond c ch3 ch3 this alkyl halide that is 2 methyl propene now here the mechanism will be followed is e1 elimination mechanism because this is tertiary uh, alkyl halide and we know that in e1 mechanism the cx bond break first that means uh, this bromine will go away and there is a generation of carbocation over this carbon and the carbocation generated will be stabilized by three methyl groups present over this carbon that's why if the starting material is tertiary then certainly the E1 elimination mechanism is followed so in summary we can say that if uh, we carry out the dehydrohalogenation then primary alkyl halide favors the E2 uh, mechanism and tertiary alkyl halide favors the E1 mechanism and secondary alkyl halide can give both E1 as well as E2 mechanism. So the, the first important factor, important parameter in deciding the E1 and E2 mechanism is nature of substrate or nature of reactant from which we can decide whether the E1 elimination mechanism is there or E2 elimination mechanism is there. Now the second uh, parameter or second factor which is important in deciding whether the mechanism is E1 or E2 is nature of leaving group. Nature of leaving group. Now you know that in case of dehydrohalogenation reaction, the halogen atom is the leaving group. Now halogen can be fluorine, it can be chlorine, it can be bromine or iodine. Now the influence of uh, this uh, nature of alkyl halide is also there on deciding the mechanism we know that the cx bond requires energy to break okay now if there is a cf bond or if there is a c cl bond then c br bond and c i bond we know that uh, the carbon and iodine the bond between carbon and iodine is the weakest bond okay because iodine has largest size and less electronegativity that's why small amount of energy is required to break this carbon and iodine bond as compared to carbon and bromine carbon and chlorine and carbon and fluorine uh, after that ci cbr bond will require less amount of energy to break so we can say that the bond is weak in that case there is a 
possibility of E1 mechanism because we know that in E1 mechanism, uh, first of all, there is a breaking of CX bond to form the carbocation. So, in which case carbocation will be generated early? In that case, carbocation will be generated early where the CX bond is weakest. So, we can say that if iodine is there, if iodine is a leaving group, then there is a possibility of E1 mechanism. If bromine is leaving group, then there is a possibility of E1 mechanism. And if fluorine and chlorine is there, then there is a possibility of E2 mechanism. So, based on that uh, nature of leaving group also, there is a possibility of deciding the whether the reaction elimination will carry out by E1 mechanism or E2 mechanism. Now, the third most important factors which decides the uh, mechanism is nature and concentration of base. We can say nature and concentration of concentration of base. Now, we know that in case of uh, E2 elimination mechanism, the rate of reaction uh, depends upon the concentration of base. But in, in case of E1 reaction, rate is not dependent on concentration of base. So, we can say that the nature and concentration of the uh, base is uh, influential factor in case of only E2 elimination mechanism. But in case of E1 elimination reaction, the nature and concentration of base is not an important factor. We can say that the E1 reaction can be carried out in a very small amount of base or a weak base E1 can carry out the E1 mechanism. But to carry out the E2 elimination reaction, we need a strong base. We need a greater concentration of the base. We can say that if the concentration of base is increased, then the mechanism of E2 reaction will be favored or we can say rate of E2 reaction will be increased. But in case of E1 elimination reaction, the rate of E1 elimination reaction is independent on concentration of base. So nature and concentration of base is not an influential factor in case of uh, uh, now the fourth important parameter which influences the uh, E1-E2 mechanism is nature of solvent. Nature of solvent. Now here also uh, we can say that in E2 reaction there is a dispersal of charges. You can see in E2 mechanism there is a dispersal of charges. Dispersal of charges. Uh, if you see the transition state of E2 mechanism, then you will find there that there is a dispersal of charges in case of E2 mechanism. And uh, therefore, a less polar solvent, less polar solvent favors, favors the E2 mechanism. Okay, we can say less polar solvent favor the E2 mechanism. But in case of E1 reaction, we know there is a uh, carbocation formation and therefore we can say that a carbocation, carbocation is stabilized by, is stabilized by, by polar solvent, stabilized by polar solvents. So we can say that E1 uh, polar solvent polar solvent favors favors even mechanism okay so these are the four factors which influence the uh, even and e2 mechanism so i will summarize them one by one finally so the first factor which we have seen was the nature of substrate the nature of substrate so in short i can say if primary alkyl halide is there primary alkyl halide is there then e2 mechanism will be favored if tertiary alkyl halide is there if tertiary alkyl halide is there then e1 mechanism is favored and if secondary alkyl halide is there secondary alkyl halide is there then both possibility of E1 as well as E2 mechanism is there so this is the first parameter then second parameter was nature of leaving group nature of leaving group okay 
Now, in case of nature of leaving group, if we can say Cx bond is weak, if Cx bond is weak, then even mechanism favors. If Cx bond is strong, E2 mechanism is favored. Then third, nature and concentration of base nature and concentration of base so we can say that in case of e2 reaction the nature and concentration of base is important in case of e1 reaction nature and uh, concentration of base is not important and finally solvent we can say that polar solvent favors e1 mechanism and non-polar solvent favors e2 mechanism so today in this video we have seen the factors which are influencing the e1 and e2 mechanism in next video we will see the another concept so we'll stop here have a nice day thank you